part of that is this desire to manage um, what gets too close to us. On one level, everything's blended, everything's blurred. We want to be only close to what's very, very near in. We want to have um, friends that are like family. We want to um, say that friends and family are the same thing, and yet um, arms length intimacy on the rise. So we're prepared to go to our therapists um, via instant message. We're prepared to go to our therapists via telechat. We're prepared to um, open up completely to people we meet online. So who's having great um, business situations right now? Well, Match.com is, along with Dorex. Um, people are really very anxious to couple up. They're very, very anxious to be engaged in intimate, deep relationships via social media platforms. Um, they're willing to be very, very familiar um, and intimate with the protection of a screen because they can always commit Facebook suicide and start again. So Facebook suicides on the rise, people defriending, unfriending people they don't like, creating new levels of friendship so that I can have my close-in friends, my sort of friends, my blacklist friends, friends I never want to see again. Um, but what we're really finding is that people are doing less face-to-face -face opening up and much more opening up by all kinds of arm's length um, mechanisms. So I don't know how many of you have been invited to participate in an online wake recently. The <laughs> online wakes are the newest thing. Um, where you go, you pay your condolences, you celebrate the life of someone you either knew or you knew someone close to them, and you participate in this meaningful experience virtually. I don't know how many of you know somebody who is going through an entire romantic cycle where most of it's being um, really uh, laddered up with great intensity, largely through type and visuals that are all being sent this way. Um, we're living in a time where time is not only the new currency, but it's the thing we're savoring the most. And it's interesting because suddenly a lot of us find we have more time than we've had before because we don't have money. So we don't have the same kind of money to go spend um, sort of buying ourselves away from time and yet what we're doing is looking to stretch everything into slowness. So slow is um, the most coveted thing we can find. The slow meal, the slow seduction, the slow act. That's really the new luxury item, anything that's slow. And if you think about who also or what also is having a great sales cycle, the slow cooker. When it was called the crock pot, it was a disaster. <laughs> the crock pot languished on the shelves of discount marketers for several years, it was rebirthed as the slow cooker and had an extraordinary fourth quarter. It was one of the great sellers in the discount stores. And basically, a slow cooked meal is the same crock pot meal you would have made two years ago. And now it's what mom does when mom cares about her family. It's what dad does when dad proves he's a thinking, feeling um, man. And this slowness and the whole idea of embracing a slow cooked meal really is an opportunity to prove that we have it in ourselves to actually um, dig deep. Because we're living in a time when we are in the midst of really a total, um, complete reboot. And one of the things we have to do is reboot ourselves to actually be able to function at slow speed. All we've really known how to do is marathon and sprint. And we now need to learn how to walk. And we need to do that while we're going 40 miles per hour on an interstate and the real problem is that most of us are doing it in a highly leveraged Porsche. And we're going to need to learn how to do this in um, a beat up jalopy. And we need to do it without being able to stop, without being able to um, find much security in the auto we're doing it in. And the trucks are soaring past us. And this kind of reboot is what the country's going through. That's what the Western economies are going through. And it's what most of us are going through in our own households. And we're doing it at a time when really what we need to do is stop and figure out how to savor respite and savor things um, that heretofore we might not have valued very much. Not very many people would have thought a great family vacation was going camping in the backyard or a great family dinner party was a crock pot meal where you threw in extra vegetables and opened up a $10 bottle of local wine. And that's actually what people are suddenly aspirational for. Because we're at a time where value and values are the big defining moment. So all of a sudden, the brands and the companies people are really buzzing about would have been, you know, in the past, things that high-end people would have really rolled their noses at. 
Um, suddenly you want to be like McDonald's. It's having a record um, time of it right now. People really find McDonald's to be a good value, good values, um, healthy food. Suddenly McDonald's is back on the healthy food list. It offers every member of the family a healthy meal. It offers um, families a uh, budget purchase and a good experience. You're seeing brands like Pepsi reposition themselves back into the value and value space. You're seeing Walmart jump into the space and offer people who don't have health care an opportunity to find a simple solution. So you're seeing all these brands kick in and value and values really offset everything that was always about prestige. There's nothing prestigious about prestige today. There's nothing prestigious about investment banking. There's nothing prestigious about paying with a credit card. In fact, if you um, walk along and see people paying with a credit card, you can pretty much assume that they're on a business related venture and that they're using a credit card because they need it for tax purposes because cash is actually the ultimate status symbol. It means that you're paying for something you can afford and it means that you're moving on in life um, with a sense of, I'm only doing what I need to do. Impulse purchases are very much out and today the new value lies in really thinking it through. So suddenly making shopping lists more and more important than ever before. People actually thinking long and hard about what are they going to buy and researching their purchases more important than ever before. And also looking very hard and harshly at the employment policies of any company that they give their patronage. So getting online and finding out not only what kind of layoffs has a company been through, but how do they treat the people they laid off? So one of the reasons that some companies are doing better than other companies is how do they treat the workers that they've had to lay off? There's a recognition that in these recessionary times, every company's gonna have to make layoffs. But were the employees that were laid off treated with dignity? Were they treated fairly? Were they treated with compassion? Were they given an extended healthcare benefits? And how did um, they react? And that's where there's upside for good brands and good values. Media is going to be the place where we find our third place, our great escape. We're going to really live our lives very much in this self-contained, self-programmed environment that we create around our own interests, our own hobbies, our own values. We can find anybody we want, anything we want. We can be thoroughly global and never leave our own um, armchair, our own desk chair, our own family room. So it becomes a great distraction, it becomes an opportunity to self-program. It replaces all those newspapers that are going to go bankrupt because we're effectively going to become our own editors-in-chief. It puts more burden on us because we're not the New Yorker fact-checking department. It means we've got to put a lot more emphasis on our own skills to be media critics and to harvest what's available. It means we've got to do a lot better job of editing what we're watching. We're going to become much, much tougher critics about what's out there. But we're going to program our own rest and relaxation. We're going to be participatory in the media we watch and we evaluate and we listen to. We're going to get very, very deep about what's there and what we're interested in. We're going to start piping our own things in. We're going to share it with people we care about. We're going to grow it. And we're going to try to create the most perfect environment we can find so that we can enjoy global news and national news and local news and sports news and entertainment news and news about our trades, and news about our hobbies, and news about our passions, and we're going to uh, co-create as we want to, as we can, and this is really going to be our third place. And it's going to be in-home, and you're going to see everything from the coffee makers to the liquor manufacturers suddenly fighting for your home, your on-premises, just like you were a bar or restaurant. Your couch is going to be every bit as important as pouring um, at the local choice. And that's going to be a real big difference because suddenly you are human media. How many people are on your friend list? How many people do you motivate? How many people do you control? And suddenly you're going to be really selling your own space. And they're going to be paying to influence you and they're going to be um, weighing in to have control over who are you influencing with what messages are you influencing. And as the personal um, CPM really kicks in, and as people start to really understand their own value as influencers, you're going to see a lot of things changing out there. So the person who really programs the most interesting environment are going to be the people that really benefit in big, tangible ways and really see upside.